say unto you that created the wrong impression in the hearts and minds of the Jews that this man has brought a new religion. So they come to him, Gospel of St. Mark chapter 12 verse 29, they come to him and they says, Master, in the Hebrew language, Rabbi, they were sarcastic. But they should respect outwardly, he said, Master, Rabbi, Moldy Sahib, or Bishop, Bishop Sahib, what commandment is the first of all? And Jesus answers and says unto him, the first is, in the Hebrew language he said, Shama Israel Adonai Elohainu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. He repeated word for word what was given by Moses 1300 years before, without the change of a dot. Meaning that in the fundamentals of faith, no change. If Trinity was what he, Trinity was what he had come to teach, that was the occasion for him to clarify himself that look, you have been hearing about Shema Israel, Adonai Elohim, Adonai Echad. But now I'm telling you that for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. That was the occasion. But he didn't say any such thing. In other words, in the fundamentals of faith, no change. Same. Some 600 years later, a Christian deputation comes to the Holy Prophet Muhammad from an area called Najran and they were housed in the mosque of the Prophet for three days and three nights. They ate there, they slept there and for three days and three nights they had a dialogue in the Masjid al Nabawi in the mosque of the Prophet. During the course of the discussion, the spokesman for the Christian poses the question among so many other things. He says, alright now tell us O Muhammad, what is your concept of God? And he doesn't fumble. He doesn't say, well, you see, it's like this and like that and like that. He, so to say, presses his spiritual buttons. There were no buttons to press. I said, so to say. I hope you people, my brothers and sisters from India and Pakistan, they understand my English. It's very difficult for me to say things and then now you go along and say, Muhammad was pressing his buttons, you know, to get his answers. I said, so to say, kehne ki baat, you, kehne ki baat, you kehte hain. <laughs> so to say, he presses his spiritual buttons, asking, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Nobody heard him say that. But so to say, trying to contact the source of all knowledge, the head computer, as the Quran describes, bal huwa Quran majidun fi lawhim mahfuz, that this is the glorious Quran from a tablet preserved. Anyone who has a connection with that, any prophet of God would have access to that type of knowledge. Like the end, end terminal of the computer system. You press the button and you get the information. Your flights, timing, this, that, reservations, everything is on. So, what shall I say? Comes the answer from the head computer. From the preserved tablet, saying through his mouth, using him as a mouthpiece. So, Qul hu Allahu Ahad, say he is God the one and only. Allahu Samad, God the eternal absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not beget and is not begotten. Wa lam yakun lahu kufran ahad. And there is nothing like unto him. A touchstone of theology in four verses. There isn't a theology on earth which these four verses do not cover. Come with any idea of your concept of God. Either with these four verses we accept or we reject. This is the touchstone of theology. Four verses, he uttered them. He said, say, he is God the one and only. If the Christians had the presence of mind, they could have asked him, he said, what do you mean say? We want you to tell us and you saying say. Why do you say, say? If I pose the question to you, you know arithmetic, and if you know the 12 time table, I'm asking, what is 12 times 12? Answer, anybody know? 12 times 12, what is it? Huh? 
144. Yeah, correct. Six times six? Right. You don't say, say 144. You don't say, say 36, do you? If you said that, I said, what do you say? Say? Why must? I'm asking you what is six times six. So you say 36. What is 12 times 12? It's a 144. You don't say, say. If you ask Muhammad, if they had asked, why do you say, say? I am asking you why you say, say, he is Allah, the one and only. He says, no, I am told to say that. As if he is only being used as a speaker in the radio. From the head computer, it is being transmitted through him. The, the message comes, say, he is Allah, the one and only. Allah, the eternal absolute. He does not beget and is not begotten. And there is nothing like unto him. And back to normal speech. He was speaking on a certain level, normal communication. Then all of a sudden, he goes into another level, which is not his. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٍ اللَّهُ السَّمَدٍ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُلَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفَنَا And back to normal. I say, you see, this is our concept of God. My brothers, you understand? This is so. So, first words. Kul hu Allahu ahad. Say, He is Allah the one and only. Moses said, Hear O Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. Jesus said, Hear O Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. Muhammad is made to say, Kul hu Allahu ahad. Say, He is Allah the one and only. What is the difference? It's the same message, meaning the same thing. So in the fundamentals of the teachings of Moses, Jesus and Muhammad, there is not an iota of difference. What was Moses teaching? Islam. What was Jesus teaching? Islam. What was Muhammad teaching? Islam. Submission to the will of God. But today we have some variations. We want to know now solutions to our problems. God Almighty was guiding the children of Israel through Moses. They had been liberated from the Egyptian bondage. In the Sinai Peninsula, they were m marching from one oasis to another, and they were supposed to do that for 40 years. 40 years, on and on and on and on and on, till the older generation, the people who had worshipped the golden calf would perish. A new generation would go into Palestine. That was the philosophy behind marching for 40 years. In the desert, the Jews, the children of Israel, they needed a law. A law that would give them quick justice. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Beautiful law. In the desert, it's a beautiful law. The adulterer and the adulteresses stoned them to death. Anybody picking a firewood, doing any work on the Sabbath day, Yom Saturday, kill him! Stone him to death. That's the only language they could understand. A rebellious people, as Moses describes them, this is behold a stiff necked people. This is Moses, the prophet saying, a stiff neck means arrogant people. He says, ye, you, have been rebellious against the Lord since the day I knew you. This is your tradition from the very beginning. Since I know you, you are like that. For such a people, you need a law, hard law, stern law. It's a beautiful law. The law is made for your needs. So eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You were trying to chase the birds from the field with that old-fashioned sling of yours, the one that David used. And the stone which you, and you let go went and damaged somebody's eye. So this other Jew will go to the judge and says, look, this fellow here, he damaged my eye. The law says, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I want to have his eye damaged. He broke my tooth, break his teeth. This was the law, nothing wrong with it. For a type of people, in the desert you need a law that will give you quick justice, no time to waste, no lengthy litigations, no prisons uh, that you can put the guy in. Quick justice, get rid of the guy and the social character and move on. There's work to be done. This guy has an adultery, he committed adultery. Your law, the Jewish law allowed the guy unlimited number of wives. Why did you interview with somebody else's wife or daughter? You deserve to die. There's no prisons in the desert. Leaving the guy in the desert to, to die of hunger and thirst was more cruel than getting rid of him by stoning him. Get rid of him. And he becomes an object lesson for others. See what happens? 
You do the same, you go the same way. 